I read somewhere one time, and I live by it, a mix is never finished, it's just abandoned. <laughs> Hi everyone! Trying both, actually. <laughs> Not very good at either. Hey, hello. Cool. Um, what was I just saying? Using what you have. Use what you have. Computer. Okay. If you have a computer or laptop, that's lovely. That's going to be your best bet. Um, that's where you're going to be able to get the most powerful software. Um, if you have, if you have an, I live in the Mac world, so I started on GarageBand, eventually graduated to Logic, which is what this is, um, and GarageBand is either free or five dollars, depending which, which model you have. I think some of them come with it, some of them don't. Anyway, it's kind of dumb, but it's either free or it's five dollars, so GarageBand is definitely worth it and a good starting point if you're in the Mac world, and there's also GarageBand for iPad and for iPhone, which is great. So, you can do that. If you're in the Windows world, um, I had to do a little bit of research on this. Sorry, my phone's on. Um, Audacity is great. It's pretty basic. You're not really gonna be able to be like splitting the atom with it, but it does work if you're just trying to do like a pretty basic like audio recording, just like, play guitar and then sing or whatever, then that's totally fine. Um, you'll find some limitations once you get into keyboards and virtual instruments and stuff. Um, but yeah, and then there's another software for Windows called Cakewalk by BandLab, and that's free, I believe, and has glowing reviews. Everybody says that that's really nice. Um, so yeah, if you have the cash, and the ability and you want to like really take it seriously, I would say maybe upgrade to something else. Um, Logic, I think, is like 300 bucks now, which is a little bit steep, I know. But if it's something that you're going to use all the time, definitely worth it. But again, start with GarageBand. It's, Logic is really GarageBand Plus, so the transition between GarageBand and Logic is... Fairly smooth, I found. They used to have Logic look totally, totally different. Um, but I think maybe like eight or so years ago, they redesigned both of them. So they look pretty much the same. It's just that Logic has this button and GarageBand doesn't. <laughs> That's pretty much the only difference. Um, yeah, what, what do you like about Logic itself? Like... Well, like, I think Logic is named really well. I think it just makes sense. <laughs> it's so logical, like all of the the buttons and everything are exactly where you think they're gonna be. You know what I mean? So it's like, I want to record. So I press R and now it's recording. And I want to play, I press space bar. You know what I mean? Whereas some other programs like Pro Tools I've recently started using, record is this three, not this three, it's this three. R is zoom out. <laughs> so, not exactly the most straightforward. And also, I started using Logic just because I was really comfy in GarageBand. And I had reached the limitation of GarageBand at a certain point. So, it just seemed like the logical step. <laughs> um, so, that's why I like Logic. It also just comes with a lot of really nice software instruments and virtual instruments. If you want to mess around with synths and stuff. Um, or keyboards of any sort, really. Um, it's very powerful for that. Um, and I'm, yeah. I'm always amazed at how, I'm oh, sorry. No, the, yeah, go for it. GarageBand is like so fully featured. Mm -hmm. Like honestly, like you can do pretty much anything you need to. Yeah. You conceivably need to. Yeah. <laughs> with GarageBand. And it's, and it's just like the, the, the finer par parts that yeah. the, the more expensive software. Mm -hmm. Is that, is that really true? Very much, yeah. I think, I think the main difference between Logic and GarageBand is that you can't use third-party plugins in GarageBand. I don't think, um, and you also have less control. So, like, for example, like EQ in Logic, I can pull up this EQ and I can be like, I want to turn it down at 4K. Whereas uh, GarageBand, it only has the smart controls, so it would be like, 
you can you have a knob for like high mid, but you don't really have a lot of like control over what high mid is. You know what I mean? So um, there's more control to be had in Logic. That's the main that's the main reason for the the upgrade I found. Um, yeah. Also, I forgot to say, if anybody has questions, just like shout at me. Just do. Oh, sorry, I tapped the mic. Everybody's gonna be like oh, on the live stream. Um, but yeah, questions, shout at me. Or you know, speak nicely to me. Um, so let's move on to mics. Again, I, did, I said this before you got here. I'm not texting. My notes are here. It says workshop oh, notes. Okay. Promise. No, it's okay. <laughs> um, so the first mic that I got, other than my mom's little built-in MacBook microphone that I'd stand this close to, and it was really awkward and sounded kind of bad. Um, this is a USB mic. So this is called the Samson Meteor mic. I think they still make it, but there's probably a lot of better USB mics you can get now. It's just that this is probably seven years old, but they it's come a long way since, especially with COVID and everything. Everybody was like, let's put out a USB mic for everybody doing their web conferences. Um, so there's much better USB mics now. But this is the one that I used. Um, and it was an easier investment because Normal mics, you'll have to plug into an interface. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna move this for like two seconds. Um, normal mics, you'll have to plug into an interface because these have little XLR inputs. These are combination inputs, so you can also put uh, like an instrument cable in, but some of them just have XLR inputs. Um, and this, this interface is what allows your mic to communicate with the computer. Because a mic takes an analog signal, this converts the analog signal into a digital signal that the computer can read and then sends it to the computer and then the computer spits back out at you. So that's, that's what an interface does. And an interface will let you plug guitars or basses or whatever into it, anything with a pickup, or like your traditional mic with like this sort of cable, like an XLR, like, like so. So, if you're wanting to use like real mics, then you're gonna also need to get an interface. Um, but if you're just looking to do something basic, a USB mic is gonna be better bang for your buck. Um, and there's lots of really good ones out there now. Um, but if you're, another thing, if you wanna record direct in with your guitars or your basses or whatever, then you are gonna need an interface. Um, this is a Steinberg interface. Um, it's fine, nothing wrong with it, but most people use the Focusrite Scarlet ones, or the red ones, um, and I have used those, and they're a little bit cleaner than this one, um, but again, nothing wrong with this one. Whatever you can get your hands on. In this kind of price range, in the, like, two, three hundred dollar range, it's all gonna be pretty much the same, um, but yeah, if you can, if you can manage the Focusrite Scarlet, then that's probably your best bet, and it seems to be the standard. Um, and different interfaces come with different numbers of inputs. So this one, as you can see here, has two inputs, um, which for most people is probably enough. If you're gonna be recording drums and you're gonna want like six or seven mics on the drums, then you're gonna need more inputs because you're gonna be able to plug more mics or more instruments or whatever into, into the interface at the same time so they can all record at once. But if you're just like, Acoustic guitar, vocal. Vocal, acoustic guitar, that's all you need. You're okay. So, um, I think that's it for interfaces. Again, I feel like such a like digital kid right now, I'm sorry. Uh, I started out with an M Audio interface. I did too, yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah, I don't know if that one might be on the cheaper end, like if the budget can't afford, because I know the Scarlet one is like a little bit Probably. More, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I started with that. Do they still make the M audio? Do they? I believe they do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's also. There's so option. many audio interfaces now. It's like yeah. You can pick one up for even super cheap now. That's like, true, yeah. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, it depends on how particular you are. Yeah. And like in the low, like, it's really not a big deal. Just kind of like get whatever you can get. If you can get the Scarlet, get the Scarlet. But if you can't get the Scarlet, Scarlet, go to Long McQuaid and be like, give me your cheapest interface. And they'll be like, here you go. And you'll be fine. <laughs> it's all really, like, there's the difference at that 
at that kind of level is minimal. You're not really gonna find it. So, okay, yeah, I'll explain the ports on the interface. So, as I said, we've got two inputs here. Um, and this is the preamp for input one and the preamp, and this is the preamp for input two. So the preamp basically, if you have a preamp off and you're running signal from a mic, it's like it's going to be too quiet for the computer to read it. So basically, what the preamp does is turns it up so it's loud enough for the computer to be able to read it and then spit it back at you. Because if your level is too low, then you're going to have to turn it up in the software, and it's going to be like. Whoa and it's just gonna sound bad. So just trust, just turn it up as much as you can. Usually they say at the loudest part of your song, if it's reading at about my, between minus six and minus four, you're probably good in your program. So when I say that, I mean this meter over here in Logic. So if I, uh, let me see, this is, I'm gonna turn this down so we don't blow our ears off. Um, Okay, yeah. So, like the level on this is really low, if you can see this meter here. So if I keep tapping it, super low, it's coming in. So this, on this, this is the interface that we use here. So on this interface, this is the preamp. Um, and for this one, you can click between different inputs. But, so it's set to turn up for one right now. So if I'm tapping this mic, and then I turn it up, it's gonna get louder in the software, see? Now on here, it's coming in super, super hot. But, yeah, so that's probably too hot. So you wanna turn it back down until, like, that's probably good, right? Because also, well, me going is way louder than anything you're gonna put into it. But, um, you get the gist. That's kind of the vibes. Um, so yeah, you're gonna want to, that's what they call line level. Um, and basically, when you record to, let me just duplicate this track. When you record to, I'm just gonna hit R for record. And I go, hey, one, two, check in one, two. My name's Claire, one, two. And then you can see here on this track that there's a little bit of a squiggle there. Right, so you can see that there. But if I turn this level way, way, way down, and oh shit, and I go, hey, my name is Claire. One, two, one, two. None of it's there, right? So Where did it go? it's gone. It's like it never <laughs> happened. So <laughs> actually, it's there, but it's very small. It's very, very small, and probably way too small for the computer to do anything with it. <laughs> yeah. Like if I, I don't even know, this is just for fun. Can I turn up the gain? Oh yeah. Let's do it. There we okay. go. Look at that. Okay, we're at, at 30, 30. So we know that I said that at pretty much the exact same volume. But the first one sounds like this. Hey, one, two. Check in one, two. My name's Claire. Right? Hey, my name's Claire. One, two, one, two. It's actually coming in much quieter, even though the level looks like it's about the same but it's just so much because the computer doesn't know what to do with it. So you're gonna get more definition if you've got your level of your recording coming in a little bit higher than is as quiet as you can. And it can be scary because if you turn it up too loud, then, one second, let's just go all the way here, let's see. Goldilocks. Hey, my Goldilocks. name's Claire. One, two. Hey, I yeah, want to. Oh, no, it's ruined. <laughs> yeah, and you'll see here it has the zero, and it's like orange. And... Sorry, I totally cut you off. No, I did. I was <laughs> just making a joke. <laughs> <laughs> so this will come in. Oh, shit, we're still on. Hey, my name's Claire. One, two. Hey, I yeah, want to. Right? It's like super distorted and you're just not going to want it. Just, you won't want it. And sometimes you do want that sound, but it's better to do that in, in the afterlife. Because if you, if you, <laughs> the afterlife is definitely not the word that I was looking for. In post, um, just because. <laughs> what we should call it. 
in the afterlife, the mixing stage. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't worry about it. Um, but yeah, if you record it like that, and then later you're like, ah, that sounds bad. There's nothing you can do about it at that point. So it's important to find a kind of middle ground. It can be hard to, to get there sometimes, but yeah, usually like between minus six and minus four. And I only say that because when you're sound checking and you're like, this is the loudest I'm gonna sing, but then you've got your motion and you're like, I'm gonna sing way louder and it's gonna ruin everything. So that's usually a good rule. Um, yeah, I feel like I'm talking in circles. Interface, um, and okay. I'm all over the place here, but sorry. If I'm confusing you, let me know. Um, two inputs, preamps. Wow, that was a really long way for me to explain preamps. Uh, <laughs> that took forever. Um, this, I don't think it's on every interface, but it's uh, just a dial so you can, um, what the input, what the interface outputs can be a mixture between what it's getting from the computer and what it's getting in through the inputs. So I find that useful, like sometimes I plug it in, like if I want to practice a bass part or a guitar part, I'll just plug it in and then I'll turn it all the way to the input so that I can just hear that without having to go and set it up in my, in my system. But normally I just have it all the way on DAW. And that's, I think, I don't think that's a stu super standard feature. But anyway, this is your headphone input and this is your headphone volume. And this is your volume for your reference monitors, which we have here. I know there's three sets of them, but we only actually use one of them. Um, I don't really know why we have all three. But <laughs> well, I guess so. We actually, yeah, no. They're so quiet. <laughs> and it's the little ones that we use, but anyway. Um, so yeah, these are your inputs for your reference monitors, um, or your outputs, well. Yeah, output from the interface into your reference monitors. So, reference monitors basically um, are an investment you might be able to make, you might want to make down the road. Um, essentially, the point of reference monitors is to give you a super flat signal because regular headphones and speakers that you go and buy at Best Buy or wherever, they're meant to make things sound good. So, they're they turn down certain frequencies, they turn up certain frequencies to make it sound good for when you're sitting and listening to music. Um, but when you're mixing and you wanna find a mix that's gonna sound good on every platform, that can, that can cause a bit of a discrepancy and make it a little bit difficult. So reference monitors are meant to give you a super flat signal, it's supposed to sound bad. That's the philosophy is that if you can make something sound good on a set of reference monitors, that's what you want. That's, that's a good mix. Um, there was actually like a big fight. It's not a fight, but like Yamaha made these NS10s. They were like the super standard reference monitors for a really, really long time. They still kind of are. Um, and they discontinued them. So now they're going on eBay for like crazy amounts of money, like thousands and thousands of dollars because they sounded so unbelievably awful. And that's why people want them, because they're, it's like, if you can make it sound good on an NS10, like, you're our guy, you know? So, um, yeah, I'm such an iPad kid. This is so gross. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so, um, an alternative to reference monitors, like a lot of people, like if you live in an apartment building or, or you have roommates or whatever if you don't want to be cranking your music out of speakers all the time or if you only work on stuff late at night I find that too um, you can get monitoring headphones so they do the same thing as just headphones um, so they're a really good investment as well if you want to go that route um, and I find they're actually also quite accurate like I have home I have a set of their Audio Technica M50Xs. I think they're a little more on the high end, but the, the, they have a, a couple like lower end ones as well. And there's lots of, in, of different ones in that kind of segment of the market. Um, um, it's, um, but I really like them. I have the outside monitors. I have the same ones at my house. <laughs> and 
you know, they were much more expensive than, than the headphones, but I find the headphones actually sound really, really similar. So if you're looking to, you know, on more of a budget, get a really accurate sound, then that might be a better option. But it's also, it just, it just makes you feel cool. If you're like sitting and you're like, oh, my mix is so good, dude, you know? So if you have reference monitors. Um, but I'd say that's more of a down the road investment if you're getting like really, really serious about it. Um, I think that might be it for gear. Does anybody have questions or anything on that? Yeah. If you like, <clears throat> excuse me, if like an external board with like four inputs, mm -hmm. it's like a, like a mixing board and you just run that into like one channel of a, uh, an interface, will just mix all those down and sound good or will it sound bad? Well, it'll be <laughs> like, cause you'll take, if you want to do that, then you'll take whatever is, um, whatever you would send to a speaker, basically. So it would go into one channel, yeah. and that's, it would be totally fine, totally cool, as yeah. long as you get all the levels right, but then you can't really edit it after the fact if you want to kind of separate it out. But yeah, if that's something, if you don't really care about like after the fact making it sound good, then if you have a board lying around, or you can probably get a board for cheaper than you can get an interface that's yeah. definitely a good alternative yeah because it's like i have a, a board at home that's like four xlr and it's like ooh, i could do drums with this if i just send it sent it to my you know my interface yeah but i don't know like it would blow it up i don't know <laughs> it shouldn't yeah as long as you have like that would work as the same as as the preamp knobs yeah. so as long as you have your like master slider or knob or whatever turned to a reasonable level so that it's reading in your software okay then that would be fine a lot of a lot of boards now like the Mackie boards I know have like USB out so you don't even need an interface you can just go straight out of the board um, but not every board has that obviously but some of them do and that's probably a more budget conscious option if you're looking to do that which is fair yeah cool. thank you yeah thanks I was wondering if you ever got KISS FM like on your electric guitar and stuff. Because sometimes when I put, you know what I'm talking oh. about? Other frequencies are insane. <laughs> yeah. Like, how do I work around? Like, how do I not get Kiss FM on my face? <laughs> you don't that want is. To help me. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> You're not Indian enough, bro. <laughs> 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 I'm like, okay, we'll get like Ariana Grande in the back. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just get a copyright strike all over the place. <laughs> Ariana Grande is just suing you for everything you're worth. <laughs> no, um, I find. It sounds dumb, but it's especially if you have a single coil. Like, what kind of guitar is it? Uh, Alex, the Janik. Oh, yeah, it's a single coil. This thing. It's a single coil. If humbuckers do it too, but single coil especially. If you if you're in a spinny chair, just turn. Just turn. It'll go away. Gotcha. Just do this. <laughs> and sometimes you'll be like back on everybody. You'll be like, does it sound good? Is it okay? <laughs> and it's really awkward. <laughs> And then you like shift this way and everybody's like, stop! But it's very annoying, but a very real thing. Just, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that is an annoying, but legitimate solve. <laughs> Just spin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thoughts? Like computers, like how much, spec like computer specifications to what you need for like certain gears and stuff. Sure. Yeah. Like, uh, like I'm, you'll probably cover that. Will you? Or? I wasn't going to, so I'm glad you said that. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. If I if I gloss over anything they were hoping for me to talk about, just let me know. Um, so at home I have a Mac Mini. It's a 2018, and I bought it specifically for recording. Um, and it has an i7 chip, which is like, I think they make i9, but they're like a million dollars and I don't, didn't want to do that. So I got the i7 chip and I think 16 gigs of RAM. Um, RAM is a really important thing if you're looking to invest in a computer. Um, I had a little tw late 2012 MacBook Pro and I think it had four gigs of RAM. Not a good time. Not a good time. <laughs> yeah. It's a minimum 16, um, at least, probably. You could probably get away with 8, but if you're able to do 16, then do 16 for sure. Um, but I will also say, 
if you're if you're in the Mac world, any of the new chips are great. I got my Mac Mini like maybe six months before they put out the new chips, um, <laughs> which was rough. And then COVID happened, and I was like, shit, I need a laptop. So I I was like. Apple, give me your cheapest MacBook. It's like a crappy little MacBook Air. Um, and it's faster. It's way faster. <laughs> so, yeah, get get your RAM, but especially if you're in the Mac world, any of the Macs will be fine. This is a Mac Studio. Um, that's what we use here. Um, and this is, it's great. It's totally fine. I, I'll check now. I think it's an M2 chip. This is not mine. Oh no, this is an M1, but it's got 32 gigs of RAM. Well, M1 Max. That's so dumb. Anyway, um, this is an M1 Max chip, but I think they're up to M3 now. But um, this is, yeah, it's totally fine, but you know, in this setting, we're dealing with like ridiculous, like 500 tracks, which the majority of people are not. I'm not. So it's just Robert owns the studio. He's like, let's do 17 harmonies. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> Although that's, that's usually me. Like, I want to do a 17th harmony. Um, but anyway, yeah, we deal with a lot of like stacks on stacks on stacks on stacks. <laughs> but if you're, if you're only looking to do a couple of stacks, it's uh, not a big deal. But yeah, if you're in, if you're in the Windows or, or, Linux, I guess, world. Um, RAM is going to be your most important thing. If you can get an i5 or an i7 chip, then that would be probably good for you. But again, use what you have. Like, if you've if you've got a computer that does a little bit less, like you could probably make it work. It might get mad at you. It might kind of like light itself on fire for a minute, but it'll be fine. <laughs> like my last computer, for example, it would only allow me to do like a full take. Like, I wasn't allowed to do, like, punch-ins. It just wouldn't allow it. It would just, like... Just like, like, no! Yeah, it would just, like, totally crunch the signal. And, and so I just got really good at just taking one track. Well, yeah, that's what you right? do, so yeah. To, like I said, I just had to use what I had. And mm -hmm. I was like, okay, like, we we'll have to agree to disagree here, computer. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know, I work with what I had. And so, yeah, so I'm glad you... Um, you went over like those uh, uh, specifications. Uh, so with regards to storage, like how mm -hmm. like minimum storage you should probably have for for like all running all this is like how much would you say? I mean, this is a hot take. Most people don't agree with me on this, but I don't think it matters because you can get you can get external hard drives mm -hmm. for probably cheaper than it would be to get a bigger actual storage space on your on your uh, computer. Yeah, like solid-state drive, I guess. Yeah, like, the solid-state yeah. drives especially are really, really powerful. Yeah. If you can, they're a little bit more expensive, but, like, I have a... This is one terabyte. Uh, <laughs> it's, like, know, that big. It's, so it's actually crazy. I think they make the same one, same size, in two terabytes. But um, I think now the solid-state ones are definitely a little more expensive. Um, but the spinning ones, if you're just looking to like put, like pull files over and put them somewhere else, then they're totally fine too. I think these are these are spinning ones. Either these are the Seagate ones, um, and I think those are probably sixty or seventy bucks, depending what size you get. Um, but if you can splurge on a solid state, it's it's gonna be better bang for your buck, and you can record straight to it. Usually, that's what I do. So, yeah, and it's cheaper than getting. 17 terabytes on your hard drive because Apple will be like that'll be thirty-two thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you need a new computer. Would you like me to order it for you? Apple loves doing that. Uh, they're so brutal. Uh, have you ever recorded anything on a phone or an iPad? I don't have a lot of experience with it. I know a lot of people do, and it's very very powerful. Um. You can get you can get interfaces now, or at least adapters for interfaces that go straight into iPads or straight into phones, um, and that works well. I've used GarageBand for iPad a little bit. Apparently, the new Logic for iPad is really really good, um, but you need like the eight million dollar iPad for it, of course, because Apple loves to do that. But um, you don't have a keyboard. That's true. <laughs> you just have to press record at the top of the screen. 
Um, I mean, you can probably hook a keyboard up to it. I actually don't know. But anyway, um, <laughs> um, yeah, lots of people do that. You don't necessarily need a computer. Um, GarageBand for iPad is really good. I've used that a little bit. It's really nice, especially if you're somebody like wakes up in the middle of the night and you're like, I just wrote the best song ever in my dream. And you just reach over your phone and you're like, Ooh, and then you wake up in the morning and it makes no sense. <laughs> been there, been there. Um, but yeah, no, if, if your overnight ideas serve you well, then good for you. You're not me, but um, that can be a really useful tool as well. And also then you don't have to invest in a laptop. You can just use what you have. That's my big thing. Use what you have. Don't like, if you don't have thousands of dollars to spend on studio gear, please don't. It's not worth it. Trust. Yeah. Thoughts? Has anybody done some recording before? Or is it like, what's the first, what's your uh, level of... Uh, beginner. Beginner? Like, beginner like, like some try. stuff, like yeah. a song or two? Or, yeah. Cool. Or made sounds into a microphone level? Uh, you know what I mean? Technically, we made a song. And yeah, okay. We made sounds. Have you done like multi-track stuff or? Yes. yes. And also I definitely have, yeah. Yeah. No, that was. Technically, it's multi-track. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Vocal space guitar. Right on. Cool, cool. Anybody else? I've like recorded some songs, but I'm not very good at the like mixing and mastering. Sure. Yet, so that's that's yeah. kind of where my limitation. Cool. Yeah, we'll go into same that really after. Is. Same, yeah. Even the people who do it professionally, they don't, they don't think they do it very well. Yeah. No, I listen to my mixes and I'm like, oh my god, I yeah. suck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So bad. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's how you get good, honestly. Because yeah, you're just true. hating on. Them every move that you make. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, oh, that sounds like garbage. Oh, yeah. Like, work, work, work. work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah. Uh, who, who has never pressed record? I, I'm really old school, so I'm, I, okay. I, sound wise, I, I used to work in video a little bit personally, just right. creatively. Yeah. Um, so my sound was whatever I could get my hands on with whoever I could scoop at the last minute to get whatever kind of source you know, at the moment with whatever we had, which wasn't even cell phones at that time. Right. Um, and then it would be like video from a VHS player, and we'd have to go into the video suite and use their sound system there. So I'm like square one and then some. I grew up on eight tracks and, and reel to reel and cassette tapes. Cool. Yeah, that's a little tiny cassette recorder. I have one with yeah. digital. And it was oh, cool. yeah. okay. Actually, cool. those are pretty fun. I wasn't I mean, sure how it would work. Depends on what you are yeah. trying to do, but. They're, yeah. they're great for like you I haven't go explored record it on Signal Hill or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you remember when the MP3 players first came out, I, and you also <coughs> had like the record option no. to like record a little audio file? I don't know if I could, but I had one of those little Apple like a, a yeah, mini one. yeah. And that's kind of what I started it with too, like just kind of like recording your ideas, like just on one of those little digital recorders. Yeah, yeah just to get it like bare bones. Just get yeah, it yeah, yeah. even. Yeah. I guess the equivalent is like voice memo yeah. stuff mm -hmm. now. For so, and that's what I use yeah. now, like yeah. on my phone. Like I have like my voice <laughs> yeah, recorder. Yeah, like over 2,000 voices. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Same. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's so recorded. Many, so many right? yeah. Yeah. song ideas. Yeah. yeah, sometimes if I'm like, if I don't really feel like pulling up all the gear, I just like, we'll do a one take voice memo and then I'll put it into Logic and then I'll like yeah. record over that with stuff. But cool. Uh, yeah. That's what I guess we would call a scratch track. Sure. Yeah. 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 iPhone track. mics are really good. They're like they're yeah. scary yeah. good. Yeah. 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 You can totally use them. I like to lots of people do. Lessons, and my nan would. My nan was my voice teacher, and she'd record it on like the little like cassettes. So it was like this boombox size. Like, oh, yeah. She'd be like, practice at home. <laughs> <laughs> so she'd record it, and then I'd go home, and because I was like a little weasel, I'd like sit there with my iPad and the boombox. <laughs> and I'd sit there and I'd sing, and I'd record it on my iPad once, and then I'd pull out my phone, and I'd be like, record the harmony over the boombox. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it was just like five different takes, and at the end it was just like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
yeah, it's Nobody like that. That's fair. Well, <laughs> well, that's why we're here. <laughs> um, that sounds awesome. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Awesome. I spent like hours in like my dining room, and like mom would like open the door and be like, "Get out!" <laughs> You're interrupting my process, mom. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's, that's very, that's so real. Um, it's, it's such a fun process to kind of like, just work with this, this like suboptimal gear. It's kind, it's kind of a nice creative thing, I find. It just forces you to like, really think about it and use your takes wisely, <laughs> which is nice. Um, but I guess we can talk about a little bit of mixing stuff now, so we can talk about a few plugins. So the song I'm gonna use as an example is, it's called Eastern Time. It's by Kelsey Arsenault. Um, I produced this with her. God, when did that song. come out? It's such a good song. Thanks. Yeah. Well, I didn't write it, nice but. <laughs> um, that came out uh, earlier this year, so I guess maybe We'll just use her isolated vocal. If she's ever watching this, Kelsey, I'm sorry. I love your vocals. Love them, love them. But it's just, it's always awkward to listen to your raw vocals. Um, but yeah, so hang on. Let me just clear everything off this and just start her from scratch. So. And I'll use only stock plugins for right now, just to, the Logic stock plugins are really good, by the way. I didn't actually buy a plugin until probably two years ago. That Q looks awesome. It looks this like, one? You know, the Pro Q stuff? It, those, yeah, those ones? it's yeah. very similar. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're doing, um, if you're doing vocals, and especially if you're like high range vocals, you're gonna want to clip out all of the low end because it's not actually gonna add anything to it. So that's usually the first thing that I do. Because um, if you've got a little rumble like that, you might not hear, but once you get a bass track and a kick drum, it's all gonna just mud together and get in the way of everything. So it's best to just cut it out even if you can't hear it. Because unless you sing in sub frequencies. So well, yeah. Like a, unless you're like a you're like a bass. <laughs> <laughs> So that's usually the first thing. <laughs> that's usually the first thing I do. Um, this is also called a low cut or a high pass, um, but I usually just do it on an EQ because it's easier. Um, oh, she's got verb. Hang on. Okay, she's dry. The way he is, show me all the and I just kind of skim it until I find the spot where you can kind of hear it. Wanna buy a property inside your memory. That's where it kind of starts to thin out. Make it so then bring it back. So, pretty, pull the lines above the page. so about there-ish, the everything below that is nothing. So that's just a nice way to clean it up um, and a good starting point. So then, usually after I do that, I grab a compressor. So let's go Dynamics Compressor. Um, I love the way he is showing up. For vocals, I like a what they call a FET compressor. Um, so Threshold, well, I guess I'll explain what a compressor does. So a compressor basically, how do I explain this? You could do so, it. <laughs> I got this. Guys, I got it. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> so a compressor, basically, it takes, um, because every recording is going to have a dynamic range, right? So you're going to have your parts that are a little quieter and your parts that are a little bit louder. Um, but when you're trying to squash everything in a mix and you've got your parts that are really quiet and your parts that are really loud, it's going to be hard to hear it at the parts that are really quiet and maybe a little too overbearing at the parts that are really loud. So what the compressor does is it takes the parts that are loud and just brings them down a little bit so that the dynamic range is a little bit smaller. Um, and it can be overdone. And if you overdo it, it's just like, 
it just sounds really squashed and obvious, um, but a little bit is just, it's really helpful to mix. Um, and usually it just makes it sound a little more glued. Um, so I like to use a FET compressor for vocals just because it has a nice kind of warm tone to it, which I like especially on Kelsey's voice because she's got a little bit of air in the, in the top of her range. So the threshold is it'll give you like a dB. So like the default for this is minus 20 dB. So that means as soon as it hits minus 20 dB, that's when it starts bringing it down. And then the ratio is how much it brings it down, basically. So if you turn down the threshold and you turn the ratio up, then it's going to be super compressed. So I'm just curious. I'm turning the threshold all the way down and the ratio all the way up. This is fun for me. I'm having fun right now. Well, I love the way you show me all the bands I'll never see. So it's hitting makes super me hard a here. Wanna buy a property and, and it also makes the room sound if you're doing it too, too harshly. Like those vocals were recorded in there, which is like a very dead room. But especially if you're in a bigger room that's maybe, you know, not like that's an acoustically treated, like whatever. But if you're just like in your kitchen you know it's gonna be even louder than that so if you've got the compressor on too hard then the room sound especially in an untreated room is gonna be really loud and probably get in the way so let's dial it in and find something half reasonable um, so I'll just like turn it down and we can watch this um, this thing you kind of always want it to be hitting just a little bit even in the quiet parts so the way Turn down the threshold until we get there. Never see. Makes me wanna buy a property inside your memory. Oh, I have the ratio down. <laughs> Sorry. You make it sound so pretty. Pull the lines up. There, it's starting to hit a little bit. And I'm not the only one's been living in your yesterdays. Your yesterdays. Love this song. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's probably a good little, that's probably a good level to have it at, because this is a really low part. yesterday. And that's still hitting a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit. So that's probably about where you want it. And then some compressors will have this, uh, this one it's called makeup, other ones it's called gain, because um, the compressor is gonna turn your overall volume down a little bit usually, just because it's taking your peaks down. So your makeup is, uh, is um, or your gain, is how much it'll just bring it back up to kind of compensate for the volume that you're losing through the compressor. Um, and then you've got your attack and release. So if you set your attack really fast, as soon as the peak hits, it's gonna go poof. And if you have it a little slower, it's gonna be a little more gradual. And then the release is the same thing, except it's the other way. So after the peak, how, how quickly it goes back. So usually for vocals, you just wanna you just kind of got to play with it. There's no real hard and fast rule to anything. Um, just kind of play with it until it sounds right. Mix with your ears, not your eyes. Um, so yeah, that's compressor. Um, and now we can kind of go back to EQ. So. Well, there's a resonance it echoes in the ache and I just spoke. So for Kelsey's vocal especially, I like to add a little teeny tiny bit of high end, it just makes it a little, little sparkly. It's kind of nice. Of the rivers running cool and clear before the levee broke. So like 8K-ish, turn it up. And then usually between one and 2K, it's gonna get a little bit harsh. So I usually like take that down a little tiny bit. Um, there's a resonance it echoes yeah, probably up in the high. ache and I just spoke of the rivers running cool and clear before the levee broke. And some vocals, hers isn't really too bad for it, but especially if it's in a lower range or if, you know, she's very like light and airy on this song, but if you're kind of belting it out, going for it, then you might have some muddiness between like 100 and 200 hertz. So, I didn't explain hertz. Is everybody okay with like frequencies? Does that make sense? Speak now? Good? Good? 
So the I'm smaller <laughs> the yeah, smaller the, the number is, the low the lower the frequency is, and it goes up to this goes up to twenty k. Anything above that is like dog frequencies you can't hear. So like the the area that you boosted mm -hmm. is that like the s's s sounds or the or like breath sounds? Or? Yeah, it's a little bit of both. Okay. You kind of got to be careful. Like her s's are a little bit loud too. Yeah. So there's another. It's literally called the de esser, um, <laughs> which on some vocals is well on all vocals really it's important to just turn on a little bit so it works exactly the same as a compressor but it only does it with the frequencies that frequencies that have s's or like f's like anything that's kind of that that type of sound so if we can find a little s-y part like the more the band-aids gets highly specific <laughs> for needs you know? yeah for real well, there's a resonance See, it's like, that echoes in the ache and I just spoke. See, it's of the rivers running yes. cool and clear. Yeah, it knows where the S's are in terms of the frequency, and most of them will let you kind of change the frequency because, like, different voices will have fre will have S's in different frequency ranges. So, um, and you can just move it around and kind of find wherever it is, and it's easy to. Um, do too much, and then it sounds like lispy. Yeah. I'm doing a lot of. In the ache and I just spoke of the rivers running cool and clear before the levee broke, but I never crossed that river bank. No, I gotta set the set. The bank or made it to the deck or to Montreal inside a wall. Yeah, her voice is actually really hard to do it on because her s's are like very prominent um but on most vocals if you turn the ds around too hot it'll just you'll sound like you have a lisp so it'll be like th -th 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 all the time because it's just ducking it out so just there's too little and too much for everything if you take nothing out of this that's what to take out of it uh so just mix with your ears not your eyes that's the big thing um, I think that's probably, that's the main thing for, um, like your main effects. And then if you want to do reverb, um, usually you're going to want to do reverb through what's called a bus. So in logic, let me just get rid of these one second so I can show you what I do. Uh, no send, no send, no send. It's called a bus or a send or an insert. It's all the same thing. So in Logic, you can go click right here underneath where all of these plugins are, click Sends, and then go Bus, and then I'll just make a new one here. Just use whatever's unused. And then here you can find whatever it is you want. So we're doing a reverb right now. So Chromaverb is a good uh, stock one. And then this little knob here will let you turn up the volume of the reverb that's being sent to this bus track. So, so now you hear the reverb coming in. Oh, I love this plugin. It makes me very happy. It has different colors too. So cute. So cute. Um, Can you change the colors? It's, it's different in different frequencies. <laughs> now, don't do that. <laughs> I did that for a very long time. Same. Don't do it. Same. It's not and worth it. And then I would like, stack my vocals and I would like, Yeah. <laughs> yeah, literally. Sometimes that's appropriate. I know, back then you were like, oh, this is so cool. Yeah. Yeah, little kids. Yeah. <laughs> So reverb is lovely, especially on a vocal, but used sparingly. Um, and one way that you can kind of make it sound like it's a bigger room is to put a delay on it. Um, and usually when people are like, but I don't want a delay on it. I don't want it to sound like an echo. Well, a delay is echo. So if you go, whoo, 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 you know? So that's what delay does. but. A lot of the time people are like, well, I don't want it to sound like that. But if you turn it down enough, it won't. It'll just sound like reverb and it won't mud up your mix so much. Um, 
So let's just try a quarter note, see what happens, turn it up, and... Hands above the page, and I'm not the only one so like, been living in your yesterday. Your so like, yesterday. that sounds dumb, but if you kind of roll it off a little bit. <laughs> the levee broke but I never crossed that river bank or made it to the deck and even then it's like a little bit loud but if you put it yeah yeah, yeah. if you put it in the mix it sounds still dead 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 so um of the rivers running cool and clear before the levee broke, but I never crossed. So yeah, just experiment and find a nice mix between reverb and delay, and don't be afraid when you have this track soloed if the delay sounds stupid. It won't. It won't sound stupid. Just give it a second. Repeat that to yourself. Let it cook. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's kind of... Those are the main effects. Does anybody have like effects that you'd like to talk about? And then we'll go into how to mix some other instruments. Like specific anything. Do you have a favorite aside from the, the core kind of ones that you go to often? That is a great question. Let me dig. <laughs> I mean, Tuggins. I'm always <laughs> I'm always a reverb person. Okay, so you have like stuff for specific spaces and yeah and it yeah it always depends um if you're asking about paid plugins oh it, yeah it doesn't matter either way whatever yeah i mean are you asking about like specific types of plugins maybe or specific for, plugins maybe for your own music like whenever you're recording yourself is there a plugin that you keep going to back to there's one from slate digital okay. which is um, let me find it. Slate Digital. It's called Virtual Mix Rack. Okay. And it lets you put on a bunch of things. Fancy. Yes. Yeah. The Slate subscription is, I, I think it's $15 American a month, so it works out to like 22 which is like ugh, pain. But if it's something you use all the time, then definitely would recommend. Um, so you can put on anything. And it's all these like vintage emulations of all this outboard gear that would cost you thousands of dollars, yeah. Uh, one thing I found very seemed to get right is gates, so like making stuff like... Like noise gates? Yeah, like, like a vocal, like if there's background noise, you can yeah. that out. Yeah. Trying to get vocals That's like fair. the indie distortion correct <laughs> is like sure. hard. Yeah, yeah. That's what you're talking about, Alex, but I cannot... Yeah, like, kind of like cassette tape. Cassette tape. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cassette emulator, cassette emulator plugins are pretty fun too. Uh, they are. I was just going to say you can get all different kind of plugins that make it sound like, like there's one that makes it sound like it's on the radio, like an old vintage radio. Yeah. Yeah. Like a megaphone sound. Or yeah. Something. Well, I'll do. Yeah, gates. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I've never really understood gates either, so I'm glad. You yeah. Know. Yeah. You Let me know if anybody has like specific things. Um, so noise gates. Um, are you talking about like? vocals specifically or like any in vocals so usually what I like to do with noise gates is just find well this one's all cut up give me a second let me see if I can find the original non cut up one are you cut up of course you are one sec box scratch that wouldn't be cut up well, it's a different mic see. I want you to play. What's wrong with you? Yesterdays. Yeah, okay, this one has noise in it. Let's do this one. So I actually did have a noise gate on this one. Um, so what I like to do is, well, I'll turn it off for a second just so we can look at it. So what I like to do is, well, no, I'll turn it on. Sorry, I'm changing my mind. So, okay, default. Let's recall default, and then we can go from there. 
So find Once Jesus been is love. Living Sorry. In your yesterday, your right. So find the nice threshold amount oh, where it's a resonance it echoes in the ache and night you spoke of the See here it's kind of like flipping and when she's breathing and like at the end of her words and stuff. So turn it turn it down until you've got all your words. Days, your yesterdays. Yeah, even then. So I'll probably turn her down like a fair bit. Once been living in your yesterdays. Your That's not bad. Okay, so then we go to reduction. So by default, this one, and I think most of them, are set to just turn it off whenever the gate is closed, whenever it senses that there's there's not any useful signal coming through. So I usually like to turn it up a little bit, just so it sounds a little more natural. Days, your yesterdays. It's just a little bit less harsh. Um, and then mess with your attack and release and make them way longer than you think that they should be. That's usually what I do. Yeah, Turn it way, way, way it's up. It's like the same set, like stuff as in a compression plugin, right? Kind of, yeah, yeah. The th well, the same. threshold is um, how, how quiet it needs to be before it turns off. So, or turns down if you have your reduction. So your reduction is how much it reduces the signal, how much it turns it down. So here, like, originally it's set to minus 100, which is inaudible, you'll never hear it. So if you turn it up, I put it at minus 50, I think, and then turn your attack and release up so it's more of a gradual cutting out and then more of a gradual coming back. So your release is... Days, your yesterday. So when she faded off there, that was her release. And your attack is how fast it, how fast it um, turns itself down. So it's basically like a little volume slider. So when it hits a certain, when it hits the certain level of quietness, then your attack starts to happen. And I have this set to 28 milliseconds. So in 28 milliseconds, it'll be gone down to the reduction level. Um, or sorry, it'll come back from the reduction level. Sorry, it's all, it's all backwards sometimes. But um, yeah, just try to make it like gradual and like less harsh than you want it to be. I guess that's, that's the main thing. Like if you turn it so it's like off immediately, then it might sound a little bit more unnatural, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? <coughs> yeah. Any other plugins, effects, anything? Actually, I was wondering, like, when you're recording, um, I guess this goes for any instrument, but I just know in Logic it does it. If you, um, I'm just going to talk about vocals specifically sure. just as an example, but when you're recording an audio, you can just choose that you want to do an audio, but then mm -hmm. there's also a section where you can, like, do, like, preset, like, types of vocals and stuff. Right. Like, would you ever use those, or do you just, like, ignore it and go straight to... You totally can. Okay. Yeah, they're they're really fine, um, but it's it's useful to know how all of the how all the little elements of that work, mm -hmm. so that if something is not working for you, then you can then you know what it is and you know how to how to change it. Um, presets are amazing and lovely, um, but if you do want to get a little more nitpicky, then then you can totally do that. Let's find a little preset. Let's see what they have. Because the Logic ones are actually quite good. I'm a Logic girly, if you couldn't tell. I love Logic. So, let's see. Voice. Let's try. Hmm. Natural vocal. I feel like I've used this one before. So it's got a de and a channel EQ, and a compressor, and another channel EQ, and then it has an echo that you can turn on if you want. And then for the buses, it's got a really short reverb and a bit of a longer reverb. So, this is what that one sounds like. The way you show me all the bands I'll never see Makes me wanna buy a property inside your memory So yeah, like that's a great starting point. And, you know, if it were me, 
and I was getting into this vocal and I'm like, mm, there's a little bit too much happening in this range. There's a little bit of like, you know what I mean? And then I can just go into this EQ and kind of clean it up a little bit. Um, and because everybody, like especially with vocals, everybody's voice is going to be a little bit different and have a couple different like high points and low points. Um, so especially with EQ, it's really nice to be able to to adjust that. But the the presets are definitely a good starting point for sure and easier to set up. Yeah. You asked about saturation, I totally forgot. Like tape, like distortion. Sorry. Um, like without going too far, you know, the elegant thing. Mm, yep. I know exactly what you mean. Let's see, what can we find here? Let's go down here actually. Why did that go away? Interesting. Oh, I only copied that one now. Oh well. Um of the way he is show me all the bands I'll never see. Makes me wanna buy. So let me find a good Sometimes literally like a guitar pedal is good. Yeah, or another thing that you can do is set it up on a bus the same way that you would set it up on like to do reverb or delay. So if you make a new bus and then let's go amp, let's go pedal board. Let's throw a tube yes. screamer on her. Yes. Throw on do I have a tube people. screamer? <laughs> I don't think this one has a tube screamer. Let's go vintage drive. I feel like that one's usually okay. So, and then we can just kind of turn it up to taste. I have property inside your memory. Cause you make it so, so obviously that's too much. Lines above the page. And I'm not the only one been living in your yesterdays. But yeah, that's a good way to keep the integrity of the original um, without mudding it up too much, but you still get that kind of like grittiness to it. You can put it directly on the track too, as long as you have it set pretty low, but I'd say that's probably the easiest way to make it stay clear, but still like cool. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, plugins, or shall we move to, could talk about plugins all day, Bob. Plugins, so good. Love a good plugin. Um, all right, let's move to, like, what kind of recordings is everybody looking to make? Like, I don't want to go lecturing you on stuff that you're not going to use. Like, are you playing, like, electric stuff, more acoustic stuff, or? I do a mix. You do a mix? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. Okay, cool. Do a little bit of everything. So this one has acoustic guitar. Maybe I might go to a different session to show electric guitar. So on this one, just right off the bat, I've got, this is a compressor. This is a compressor, but it's an EQ, but they call it a compressor. Um, and this is an EQ and this is an EQ. So a lot of these things have weird names. Like this is called Air, Air EQ Earth. So it adds earth to the sound, which is just like, low end <laughs> it's like 500k it's uh, yeah so yes, weird certainly. and air is like i like that though it's, like, it's yeah. nice it if is. yeah then i don't have to be like well we need to bring down the 2700k like <laughs> turn up the earth bro <laughs> um <laughs> not enough earth in the signal yeah exactly i feel so grounded right now with my earthy cube um but yeah, it's just a little, little compressor, a little compressor, little EQ, little EQ. And again, like these EQs are just hitting a little bit constantly. And like if I turn off the earth and the air, so the air gives a little bit of that bit. And the earth gives it a bit of that's the only way. Yeah. Like so this is off. This is air. 
this is Earth. The Earth is very subtle. <laughs> I probably could have turned it off, let's be real. But, but yeah, any louder than that, it gets a little bit muddy, so. So yeah, that's the basics of that one. And then I just had another channel EQ. I did the same thing here. There was probably a little bit of muddy, muddy low end stuff that was getting in the way of the bass and the kick drum track. So I just rolled off the low end, the same as I did on the vocals. Um, and turned it down here, because there was a little bit here. And a little bit of mid, mid range down, a little bit of high end down. And it's just a little bit cleaner. That's all. So like, again, mix with your eyes. Or no, don't mix with your eyes. <laughs> don't mix with your eyes. Mix with your ears. Um, and my little my little sparkly sparkly tip is just put a little bit of chorus on an acoustic guitar. Not enough that you'll notice it, but enough that you'll be sad if it's gone. So this is without it. It just gives it a little bit of a you know. Feels like it's kind of dancing around your head a little bit. Whereas it's, now I'm like, I'm listening to this on speakers. And now I'm like, Kelsey's serenading me on the guitar, you know? It's just nice. Um, and what do I have for the sends here? I've got a reverb and another reverb. I don't know why I have two reverbs on this. I promise I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Sometimes I look at these sessions and I'm like, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> Um, sometimes two reverbs sound good together. Sometimes, yeah, maybe I was in the moment and I was like, this needs a second reverb. I can't tell you why, but it does. Um, so yeah, that's, that's acoustic guitar, bass. I only really recently started doing this, but I found I was having a really hard time getting my bass to kind of cut through the mix. It was just blending in with the kick drum and you couldn't really hear it. And especially when I was like, I'm a bass player, so I'm like, if I'm playing like a really cool lick and then I can't hear it in the mix, I'm like butthurt about it. So what I've recently started doing is I duplicate the bass. So I put the bass on two tracks and on one track, you only take the low frequencies and on the other track, you only take the high frequencies. So that you can turn the high frequencies up so that you can get the kind of clarity of the bass, whereas the low frequencies will sometimes more often be in the way. Um, but it is nice to have them obviously for like, you know, just feel and like punchiness. But you can get the clarity through the high end one. So like, this is the high one. That sounds sad. And this is the low one. Well, exactly, that's what I thought. <laughs> and like, that like warm kind of stubby tone. Sometimes I'm like, yeah, that's all I want. But then so it gets together, buried. If you put them together, them together, it sounds exactly like my actual bass tone. Sonic. Yeah. <laughs> but then it's like, if I turn the high one up, then I can kind of hear what I'm doing more. If I turn the low one up, I'm just like feeling it a little bit better. Yeah. But, With the drums, if it's just the low, like there, like you can't hear that at all, right? Where you get the kind of like string buzziness a little bit in the high end one, which is fun. So yeah. Um, okay, ambient mod wheel warfer. Um, mix. So I guess I will say if you're not going into doing like real drum tracks, um, MIDI drums are really good now. They're really quite incredible actually. So if I go in Logic, and I believe GarageBand is the same or very similar, if I go software instrument, make a new software instrument, and I go drum kit and Brooklyn, or better yet, I can go make a drummer track. 
So our drummer friend Kyle is going to play drums for us. That's his name. Is He's it? Kyle. He plays pop really? rock. Oh, they have. We've also got <laughs> Logan and Anders and Gavin. I wonder if they're actual real people. I bet they are. Yeah. I bet they are. Definitely, probably. Yeah. Man, I'm a plug-in. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be so cool. I want to be a plug-in. <laughs> My hair. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but these, yeah, no, these are really, really great, especially if you're not a drummer. I'm not a drummer. I don't really know what's happening in drumland a lot of the time. So, <laughs> Jesus, yes. Kyle. <laughs> so we can go. Make it softer. So it's chill. He's simple. He's shredding. Oh, yeah. He can change his kick snare pattern. Change his hi-hat pattern. Make him go to toms. Make him play the cymbals. Make him play the tambourine. And on drums. Do Kyle. whatever you want. Kyle. Let's go, Kyle. But uh yeah, no, that's that's a it's a really, really good resource if you wanna if you wanna put drums in your in your mix, but you don't if you're not a drummer or you don't have the resources to record drums. If you wanna record drums, by the way, um, let me know. You can come in here. We do a an RPM deal, so if you want drums during RPM, let us know. Um, shameless plug. Sorry. Um, <laughs> um, Jesus, I love that there's an XY pad for the drums. I think that's really smart. yeah. It's very cool. Yeah. So you can actually, like, play it. Yeah. Even if you don't play the drums. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> okay, take it back, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, chill out, bro. Chill out. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> Go to hats, Kyle. Um, or you can, if you'd rather, play them in. And you have a little mini. Does this one have musical typing? <gasps> it does. All right. So if you don't have a MIDI keyboard... Go to typing. <laughs> I'm a typer now. Um, <laughs> I was just thinking, you just speak and go hard. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's if you have like a really specific Jeez. idea, then then that's a that's a good way to start. And if you have a MIDI keyboard, um, I found for myself, the musical typing pissed me off really, really, really fast. So I did I did buy a MIDI keyboard. Um, you can get one like this. You can get bigger ones. Um, just depends on what you want. There's one there. Like most standard keyboards come with a USB thing, so you can just plug them right in your in your computer, and it'll it'll read it as a software instrument in whatever program it is you're using. Um, and there's lots of different sounds you can mess with. There's fake guitars, fake pianos, uh, synths, you know, like anything that you could possibly want is probably in a software instrument, um, whether it comes with your program or you download it from the internet. There's lots of free ones that are good too. So, yeah, I'm trying to think if there's, oh, let's do electric guitar actually. Um, no, don't save. We don't, we don't need what I just did. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Overwrite whatever you've been working on. Let's delete Kelsey's whole album. Save that. Save that. <laughs> what do I have that has a like? Let's go to Sophia's. That's a good one. This is uh, it's called Way Too Long by Sophia Burke. I did this a, a couple years ago. Not a couple years ago. I don't know. A while ago. Um, but this is a little more of a rockin' tune, and her voice is pretty different from Kelsey's as well. So we'll go through the electric guitar stuff. Um, and for me, I'm not, like, a guitar player, guitar player. I don't really have any amps. I don't really, like, you know, I'm not, I'm not like, oh, I need a Fender amp, or else, no. Like, I use, so I use amp sims. The ones that come with Logic and GarageBand are actually quite good, and it allows you to record it and then change your tone after if you end up not liking it. Um, a lot of people are amp sim haters, but I am not an amp sim hater. I am an amp sim lover. Um, 
But if you are an Amsim hater, um, just like stick an SM57. I'll grab one. Give me two seconds. Stick an SM57. Uh, one of these guys. If you have an SM58, um, which is just like your standard vocal mic, the one with the like silver grill, it's the exact same mic. You just twist the little grill off. Exact same. Doesn't matter. So you can just stick these on your amp if you're wanting to record an amp. Um, you can go straight in the middle of the speaker, um, but it might be a little bit muddy, so usually just like move it like an inch or two to the right or to the left, or you can back it off, whatever. You know, just experiment with it and see what works best for your amp at your volume. But, um, guitar four? Yeah, okay, so this is the Slate Amp Sims, but it's all the same. So, this is a Tube 9, it's a Tube Screamer. Um, they're just not allowed to call it that. Um, and then it's going into a Marshall amp head and a cab and it has a verb and another verb. So this sounds fine. Uh, oh, oh geez. Sounds pretty big and massive. So I actually have no EQ on that. Player. Get it together. Um, I guess it was just fine and it didn't need it. Was too good. The Ipsen was too good, dude. Like, it was just. Um, it all right. Okay, this one, it's, it's two tracks, but I put them together because they were doing the same thing. And then I gave them an EQ. So let's look at this EQ. So it's just rolling off the low end, like I said to do for the. for. Anything that's not bass or kick drum, basically, or maybe low tom, if you've got low tom. Um, just low, roll off the low end until you hear it kind of degrading a little bit. And just here, that is a really big hike, but... I guess I just wanted more brilliance there. So I just pulled this little bit up a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's really gonna depend on the song. Um, just kind of mess around with stuff. These are MIDI drums, actually, so this is a good example. Um, oh, never mind. This is a different system. It doesn't have the sound that I have. <laughs> Let me, two seconds, two seconds, two seconds. But this is, um, I actually wrote, and I didn't actually play it, uh, like, on drums. This was me on a keyboard, like, um, which is fine. <laughs> Uh, drum kit. I had it on. Brooklyn. Yeah. Now oh, she's got crazy verb. But, um... Ox, ox, what is this? I'm just exploring right now, sorry. Um, yeah, I think like, that kind of covers all the really basic basics. Does anybody have anything in particular that they wanna know about anything, this session or the other session or any other session or whatever? Um. You were saying you like the amp sim, so you're using mm -hmm. that most times like on recording guitars and your bass going direct in, not mic and amp, mic and an amp for the most part? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if I've ever mic'd an amp for anything that I've done for myself. W what about when you're recording an acoustic? Are you going just playing that into a microphone? or? No, or? yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, yeah the usually acoustic guitar pickups don't yeah. record super well. Yeah. So I usually do mic them. We've got... Um, you can see like that, any of those mics out there, they are like large diaphragm condenser ones. Um, the like traditional like vocal mics that you see in studios. Uh, you just put them generally at the 12th fret of the guitar and angle it a little bit towards the, towards the sound hole. And you can move it around and figure out where you want it 
the best. But yeah, if you plug in an acoustic guitar, it usually is not the best sounding recording. It's fine. Um, but if you're able to get a some sort of mic on it, it doesn't have to be a mic like that, but that's generally what I use. Um, but any mic that you have is fine. Um, these are fine. USB mics are fine. Whatever you got, really. But yeah, if you could avoid for acoustic guitar, um, using the pickup, I would probably recommend that. You probably have a better result. Yeah. What's your order? Like, do you do vocals first and then guitar and then drums? Or are you going to make like the track and then just add the vocals afterwards? <sighs> that is a great question. I don't really know. <laughs> when I'm working with other people, usually um, I'll get them to come in and do. Um, if they wrote it for piano or wrote it for guitar or whatever, then I'll get them to play that track and then sing like a rough vocal over it that we'll replace later. And then we kind of build everything around that. Generally, I do that and then I go drums and then bass and then like other guitars and then maybe keyboards. But it, it varies depending on the song, of course. Um, for myself, it's like, like I kind of write and produce at the same time. So sometimes I'll make a bass part and then I'll do the guitars and then I'll be like oh let's do drums you know it, it really varies it's like whatever but usually when I work with other people that is that is the process and it, it generally works pretty well yeah yeah with the recording bands off the floor do you like usually find yourself like having vocal mics in the room with them live or do you usually like overdub the vocals after they would swap what works for what situation yeah I mean it depends on the band and like you know, if, if it's like two people like playing acoustic guitar and singing, usually you'll keep it. Um, but sometimes if it's if it's like a louder band and you've all got amps going, then the, then the vocals might not be super, super clear. Um, and then at that point, sometimes I overdub them. Um, but it, I'm usually careful with that because sometimes it can be kind of obvious, like especially if there's a video to go with it. Um, but I mean, yeah, nothing against it. Like, do you... Do whatever, do whatever works, but I always do record the vocals, at least, when, when people do live takes. Whether or not we use them is another question, but I always have them just in case, yeah. And usually for that, we just do, like, especially if it's a louder band, just use, like, one of these or, like, a the other version of this, like the 58. Just, like, a standard vocal mic that you'd see on stage, usually. Um, just because they kind of reject sound, whereas those ones out there kind of pick up the whole room, which is not ideal for, for vocals in that kind of setting. Yeah. 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 We'll go back and forth now. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Generally speaking, are you going to have, like, many versions of the person singing for the vocals and then, like, put them on top of each other and make it, like, high, like them singing it higher and them singing it lower? Generally, yeah. If you're going for, like, a big production thing, I do... Um, not all the time, but sometimes you'll want to double it, so you'll want to just sing the exact same thing, like, a few times, um, and, and layer them on top of each other, and then, usually for harmonies, I do, I record harmonies at least twice, and then I'll put one of them in one ear and one of them in the other ear, that just makes it sound nice and wide, um, and just makes the harmonies kind of pop a little bit better, um, and for octaves, sometimes, yeah, do octave up, do octave down, um, just depends on the song what what you want the song to sound like I find an octave up will make it pretty like cutty and cool sometimes so yeah are you ever like splicing stuff from two different takes to get like okay I want this part obviously what's the I know like All you were talking about splitting your bass part and mm -hmm. using the high and low frequencies mm -hmm. it's I guess inevitable some Times you're going to do this with so many tracks and accidentally shift something around where it's slightly out of phase. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I, tips or tricks to just try to avoid that or just pay attention to. <laughs> I mean, like, I try to, especially, well, even if you're not playing to a click track, try to start your recordings, like, on a bar or on a beat at least. So then you can kind of slide them at least to the closest beat rather than if you're like a 64th into one beat then like you're never gonna find that but um worst case scenario if that does happen just like zoom all the way in and like yeah. find it'll go like 
that on the screen and it's it's a horrible time but <laughs> you can do it <laughs> but and you can also um sometimes you can lock tracks i usually don't i just put maybe too much trust in myself but um you can lock tracks so that they they move together but yeah it's it sucks but it happens <laughs> Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes you want the feel, like if you've got a bit of push and pull in your song and, and you want that, then that's cool. But if you can record with a click track, it will make your life happy. specifically for the RPM or this time or just thinking about it I feel like I'm just always working on things yeah. I've got like mm -hmm. 10 started projects and like none that are finished <laughs> <laughs> yeah like, trying to find like the end point of a song is so hard because it's like I might want to add this or take this away and then right like, yeah I, just, I feel oh, like I never know when my songs are finished uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a good that question. is like, a good question. In the production, like especially, like where do you say just throw up your hands and be like, "This is done." I read somewhere one time, and I live by it. A mix is never finished; it's just abandoned. <laughs> yeah. You just at a certain point, you have to go. All right, I'm done. It's fine. Like there's always going to be stuff that you're going to want to change. Um, and you might get two years out and be like, man, I really wish I did this or I really wish I did that. Um, I find working, if you, I love deadlines. I'm a deadline person. If I give myself, I'm like, I'm going to be finished this thing by February 8th. And whatever I have done by February 8th, that's what's done. You know what I mean? I find that's, <laughs> that's helpful sometimes, but also stressful other times. But if you can get it to a point where you're reasonably happy with it, then do it. But that's, that is a, that is a battle for sure. Yeah, it's, yeah. Never finished, just abandoned. It's like there's so much, so much possibility yeah. now, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah that's the thing. There's just so many options. It's just never ending. When it comes to producing, yeah. Yeah. It's like final mix. Final, final mix. <laughs> <laughs> final, final, <laughs> final mix. Always. Well, that's another question. Like, do you have, a, like, a numbering or, like, a na file naming system that you use? Is it... Is it ever final, final, final? Is I... Or is there, is there some other trick for that? I started labeling things with the date. However, I once started working on a record in November. And then the record took two years. So then I had to start adding the year to the date. So I was like, oh, December. Like, that just happened. And I was like, no, that was December 2021. <laughs> and I'm like, this mix is not even kind of the same so dates is nice I find when it when I finish everything and I come to the mixes I just go mix one mix two mix three mix four and then when I pick one of those mixes then I'll go in and change the name to final mix or I'll rebounce it as final mix um but yeah that can get real confusing real quick <laughs> so when it comes to like bouncing down and like mastering so your master track mm -hmm. like could you cover that like just the basics of it. What do you mean? Like, what to put on the master? Yeah, yeah, like, because sometimes you might bounce down a track, but, like, um, like, sometimes you need the right specifications to upload it to, like, DistroKid or right. get it on, like, Spotify or whatever. Yeah, yeah. um, yeah, I, I don't really specialize in that. Okay. Um, usually that is something that I send away. A lot of people say, like, that's something that you should let somebody who really knows what they're doing do. Um, but there are plugins and there are like online things where you can upload it and it'll be like it's mastered, you know. And it, it might not be the best master, but if you're if you know if you're looking to save some money and you know not have to pay someone to do it, then that's a good way to go about it. If you're there is also plugins. Um, let me find it. Oh, it's on this one. It's called Slate Digital FGX. It's also in the Slate package. Um, 
I just, when I'm sending it, like when I'm dealing with uh, other people's music and they just want to hear like a mix, even if it's not a finished mix, then, you know, this masters it, but it's not ideal, but you can do it. Um, so this is an FGX. It's basically just a fancy compressor. So you can just put a compressor on it and you'll be fine. Um, and if you want to clean up some EQ stuff, if you find you've got a little bit of, because like most EQs will have um, a solo. Um, see, like this one has got a little bit of, maybe a little too much right here. So I can just grab that and pull that down and just kind of, you know, see what's what's maybe given too much or not given enough and do that. Um, so just like a little bit of compression, a little bit of EQ, and then usually I put a, a limiter on it just to make it loud enough. So a limiter is just a compressor, but more aggressive, basically. So it's, Call me up at 1 yeah, that's way too much, but. So this is what it's, I don't know why this is so small. There we go. So this is way too loud, two seconds. Um, yeah, so this is, once it hits this level here, then it will just haul it right down. It's the exact same as a compressor. It just is a little more clean cut and will, it's better for a master. Usually, I don't really use it on much else because um, it's just, it sounds a little harsh on other things. Um, but yeah, that's a limiter. This is the adaptive limiter. So here you can turn up the volume of it and then also change how loud you want it to stop at. So for me, like usually when I put it on zero, it gets mad for some reason. So I put this one on minus 0 0.1 and then it doesn't get mad anymore. Um, but yeah, then it just makes it so the level is reasonable so that when you're listening to it in your headphones, it's not way, way, way quieter than everything else. And it's just, it's better if, you've, if you're trying to A-B it with other things too. That's another, sorry, I'm way so all over the place. Um, when you're finalizing your mixes, it will hurt your ego, still hurts my ego, but if you find a song that's kind of similar in the vibe to the song that you're mixing and listen to that and then listen to your mix. Um, that can be helpful to see like what, what you can change about your mix, um, what it might be missing or what it might have too much of in terms of EQ, especially. Um, but yeah, that one hurts sometimes, but it's fine. It's helpful. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, very much so. <laughs> That's why the professionals are great for it. <laughs> it's just practice. It really is. It's like, it's so don't, so yeah. It's so you know, masochistic or so. Yeah. <laughs> Have you had an experience with recording, like, um, if I'm a bass player. And mm -hmm. I've gone from, over the years, amps on stage, mm -hmm. like big cabinet and SBT amps yep. to using like sans amp to now I'm actually going um, through an HX stomp unit because oh, nice. we're mostly in-ears. Right. But I've never recorded with that. I've got the focus right. Actually won a free focus right with the whole, like the package with the microphone and everything. Oh, sick. I use it sometimes just with headphones, but I haven't delved into it at all. And the, the free software that comes with that, I think is not too great it's like an what is a it i think it's ableton light or is it ableton? oh yeah ableton is kind of hard to learn it's, yeah yeah i i started i never figured it, it out abandoned it and said yeah. no I'm, I'm gonna get into this i'll probably purchase something sure yeah but with the hx stomp unit in particular i've got that just for like having it as a guitar amp modeler as well right but, um because bait like live bass i'm pretty just like bare bones not doing mm -hmm. too much at all but you can get weird and wonderful with that just messing around like yeah. with what it can do um have you ever used something like that into a recording or would you just use some like um downloaded presets to play around with that stuff yeah i've never i, I don't know how i would do like i've never tried it to use that hx stomp into the interface and see how that comes through right 
Yeah, no, it would be the, the exact same as it would be if you were putting it into a DI or throwing it to the board in, in a live setting. Do you t- yeah. play with amps usually on stage live? Or- I have a little combo amp, yeah, yeah. just because I, I get nervous that I'm not going to be able to hear myself. <laughs> I have yeah. trust issues. Yeah. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, I haven't actually recorded with like a with a unit like that but I do know people who have and it's it's totally fine um I choose usually to well honestly for bass I don't even use an amp sim I just kind of EQ it to where I want it yeah you're Um, just going direct into the interface and then EQing it from there Yeah. yeah yeah but there are good amp sims like the one in Logic is actually not bad um you can buy big crazy ones if you want oh it's actually on this one um so this is, I don't really know what it's modeled after, but. I bought one from Ampeg when it was on oh, like a 50% sale. Amazing. I haven't really yeah. delved into that yet. Everything, like the same thing with the HX Stomp, it's like there's a big learning curve when you're yeah. trying to have the deep dive into it. Mm-hmm. And like, it's just, yeah, <laughs> it's a matter of time. Just yeah. Not the nuts and bolts of it all. Right? Yeah, I think we do actually have that one on this computer, but I'm the same. I haven't, I haven't delved into it yet. Um, but yeah, lots of good amp sims, but if, yeah. I usually just put it in there and EQ it and <laughs> compress it and do whatever. But AmSims would probably make life easier. Or you can just go straight from your... If you've got a tone that you like in, in your HX Stomp, then, then throw it in there. It'll be good. Yeah. I actually got a few presets that I put into it. Like one that I use for um, pretty much just a clean tone. Mm-hmm. And then just one foot switch to go to like add a bit of dirt. To, sure. Like for a song or two, but cool. Yeah. yeah, but again, like I've, I'm most my experience is mostly like playing live. I have recorded before, but not been involved in the the process. I've right. Just played my part. Had someone else, like had it recorded for. Like, yeah. I mean like that, but um, yeah. So I don't know about the RPM challenge this year, but that's something I've been wanting to do for years and years, and just never. Same. Yeah. Same. Yeah. But yeah, you can totally throw it in your interface. It'll be fine. Yeah. Anyone else? Not really? Thank you very much. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming, everybody. Yay.